unquestionably evil. And what's even more evil is they got away with it. They paid off. They had to give away a, a certain amount of money. I think it's six billion. See if we could find the settlement. So a little bit around six. And be, now they can't be prosecuted. So they essentially bought their way out of going to jail for directly being responsible for the deaths of how many people? Right. Hundreds of thousands. So it, in a, the most bizarre coincidence I've ever experienced in, in the, my years of being in the business, the day Painkiller came out. The Supreme Court paused that decision. Have you heard this? No. It's a, it's a fascinating story. You should read about this. The day we came out was about 12 days ago now. The Supreme Court said, hold up. You 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 cannot cut a deal. Wow. So yeah, Supreme there it is. Court blocks Purdue Pharma's $6 billion Sackler opioid settlement. The justices will examine if bankruptcy court can force claimants to sign away their legal rights in a settlement. So... Let me break it down quick, because this is actually fascinating for anyone who's paying attention. The deal that they cut, Purdue cut, was $6 billion. We're going to pay $6 billion to all the victims of OxyContin, but we're going to do that over the next two decades. We'll, we're going to parcel it out. And the Sacklers have maybe 15 bill in the bank, give or take. So they, they're just counting on interest rates to pay that six billion. And the deal they had cut said, we'll pay you the six, but you can never, there's no more. And you can never come after any more of our money and you can never come after us for any criminal charges. So they were basically buying their way to safety for six bill. And they, that deal was taken. The Supreme Court just said, hold up not so fast, we're not gonna accept that deal, you may have to pay more, and we may go after you. So now the potential for them to face true bankruptcy and maybe more is on the table. How accurate do we know, like some of the, I know you, this is a docudrama, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what, how you would describe it? Sure. Or based on a real life, real life events. Yes. But some of the things that he, that Sackler said, in both the, the older Sackler and the younger Sackler, Richard and what was his dad's name? Um, Arthur. Arthur. His but, uncle. Yeah, well, his uncle, sorry. Both of those, the, the statements, they're, they're so horrific. Do we know they definitely said that? Right. Well, so, there, yes, there's so many horrific things they said. One of the things we know that they did said, which was like, like, there, one of the original strategies that Purdue Pharma had that they were advised to, to adopt by you know, their lawyers and their advisors and their marketing guys, when they realized that people were dying, the kids were crushing up Oxycontin and snorting it and getting addicted and overdosing, when they realized it was being misused this way, their strategy was, quote, hammer the abusers. Hammer the abusers. So you're Joe, you're... 19 year old daughters just dropped out of an oxycontin overdose the response of purdue basically is well your daughter was a drug addict oh god your daughter was a drug addict I, i'm so sorry for your loss but your daughter was a drug addict don't blame us hammer the abusers and that was literally said out loud or written down like that how, was how they... the strategy and to blame abuse on Addic on addicts and to say anyone who has a problem with oxycontin it's not our fault they're just drug addicts it's not our fault you know we gave yeah we gave them heroin but they're at but they're, they're hammer on the abusers mass attorney general alleges purdue pharma tried to shift blame for opioid addiction Whew. yeah so think about that think about you being the parent and if you you know see the show we open each episode with a a parent, you know, we, we were told right right when I got ready to lock the show, I got I was told I had to get on a Zoom with all the legal, you know, from Netflix and others because the Sacklers are really good at lawyers. You know, Giuliani was was one of their main a, attorneys, Mary Jo White. I don't know if you know who she is. Yeah. Um, she's a, a very powerful attorney and others. Uh, so they, there, you know, there's a lot of fear about being sued, you know, and I... I I have my talking points here about what I'm not <laughs> supposed to say. Uh, so, again, okay. e everything I'm saying is stuff has been proven. You know, more or less my theory and things that have been backed up by books like Painkiller by the very talented Barry Meyer, who wrote Investigative Reporter for the Times, who wrote it. But we were told by legal that 
we had to put disclaimers in front of each uh, episode. You know, what you're about to see is based on fact, but some of the facts have been changed. And, you know, so, this, so, it's not all true. We've changed some of the facts. Um, and that didn't really sit right with me because, yes, we have interpreted things and changed some things. But the reality is the Sacklers did what they did. And I didn't I thought like just putting a standard disclaimer would be kind of letting them off a bit. Um, and I was thinking about it. I'm like, well, what if we had a, a 50 year old woman sitting? We open the show, 50 year old woman staring at the camera and she reads the disclaimer exactly as legal says, you know, what you see um, is based on fact, but some of it has been fictionalized. And then she stops and she says, but what what hasn't been fictionalized is that my 22 year old son, Tommy, and she holds up a picture, died of an Oxycontin overdose. And um, that was, you know, the kind of thing that was, I think, very important to me and to all the makers of the show that as if we were going to veer from the truth and we were going to potentially occur the wrath of the Purdue legal, we did it in a way that never let them off the hook.